Mr. Altuntas, as a moderator of this panel. Bybars, please, the floor is yours. We have next speaker, aside by bus, more than welcome, thank you. Dr. Gerhard Hebitek, coming from European Brand Institute from Austria as acting president. Gerhard, the floor is yours. Jean-Christophe Bart Couler, a dear fellow table member yesterday during the gala dinner, Jean-Christophe, at, at the best table, thank you. 29, indeed, a member of the supervisory board of the European Champions Alliance coming from Switzerland. Joe Robrechts, the founder and chairman, CEO of Triumon from Belgium, but there is a substitute, more than welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ivan. You know, angel investors are investing in jockey, not the horse. You may have a great business model, you may have a great business plan, very good company valuation, etc. Every okay. Technically, everything may seem perfect to convince investors. But it is interesting with the same business model, with the same business plan. Could you please close the door? Yes, thank you very much. Um, we see that some entrepreneurs are able to raise f funds faster and better. Uh, what is changing? For example, yesterday, our you know, panel session is about creating an acute story to convert your audience to your investor. Yesterday, in the uh, break time, three guys we made a, a meeting uh, with uh, three guys from Durban, city of South Africa. One of them is the vice mayor, other one is the head of the uh, these uh, startup issues, etc. And they invited WBAF to, be, to establish the country office in Durban. I said, ah, difficult. Ah, you were there, Septim. <laughs> difficult. Because when you said South Africa to me, as a brand, as a story, is it a correct pro uh, destination for me to invest in Durban instead of Cape Town or Johannesburg? Because Johannesburg seems better investment destination. And I was not, um, I mean, uh, I said, let's talk later. A few minutes later, Vice Mayor told me the story of Durban. A cute story <laughs> for me. He said, let me give a little bit information about why Durban is important. For example, he said, Mandela was arrested in Durban and voted. I, uh, Philip, you were. Yes, <laughs> you are here. Oh, great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Philip told me that and he was voted. Uh, for, then the story changed in my mind. I said, so you you are inviting WBAF to establish the country office in the city of Mandela. Just a second, this is another story. In two minutes of time, story change in my mind. So I think this is a good example for creating an acute story of why it is so important to convince uh, investors. Yes, the same people, and I'm same investor, same Durban, same business. What is changing here to convince the investor? The story is changing everything. I think the most important part of the whole uh, process is the story. Why I am going to invest in you? Because if you ask me, there are thousands of cities. There are uh, there's Johannesburg or Cape Town in South Africa. Why shall I invest in, uh, in this? So um, I want to start uh, from uh, uh, dear panelists because we have really uh, three good uh, panelists. He is the executive director of the World Association of Public-Private Partnership uh, from the Geneva. President is here uh, too, uh, and uh, the, uh, the president uh, of the European uh, Brand uh, Institute from uh, Austria uh, is uh, with us. Uh, a great speaker with an OECD uh, background uh, coming from uh, Belgium. And uh, let's discuss a little bit about 
how uh, we know it is important, but how they can develop better equity stories for their ventures to make investments faster. The floor is yours. Çalışmıyor galiba. Hangi düğme? So obviously, storytelling is extremely important to uh, to to uh, how I say uh, unleash the appetite of investors. But on top of that, I think there's a very important dimension that we're not speaking enough of, and that is governance, and I would say governance and governance, because the storytelling about good governance will reassure and give confidence to investors. And so one of the things I look into uh, is that how is the uh, funding team organized? What is their ambition? Have they taken the upfront time that is necessary to shape and deci decide together where they want to go? Do, do one or the other ones have uh, different exit scenarios? Um, all these things shape the story. That's the really important underlying element that will also give them either the fundament of going somewhere with the support of the investor or simply fail like so many do. And I believe that one of these uh, is definitely um, how, how you're able to communicate uh, this culture that you have been defining in your governance. Now, there are a couple of tools how you can do that. One of them that I like to promote is the Memorandum of Understanding and Process, where you systematically go through the uh, different steps uh, of what you want to achieve together as a team. And I'm not speaking about legal documentation or bylaws, articles of association, you name it not even speak, thinking yet about a shareholders agreement. It's, it's much earlier in the uh, project life cycle of a, of a venture. Sitting down together, taking the quality time, it's when you have these crazy ideas that you want to transform the world. But please do it in a systematic fashion. Pin down what are your aspirations, your values, because that is going to shape all the life of your entrepreneurial a project and so I believe that it's super important to take that upfront time which will then be reincorporated in your storytelling Thank you. So, uh, governance is one of the important features of this jockey you say and of course in the, in that case the jockey is can be uh, an institute too so governance of the institute not also of the individual yeah Thank you very much. Branding. Uh, yesterday in the uh, opening uh, speech, uh, uh, opening ceremony, we, I think, uh, listened to a nice video about the importance of branding. He asked why Starbucks is so good branding. Us. So um, uh, I think you have many things to share with us, uh, dear Gerard, please. Ah, yes. Oh, sounds different. Good morning. Uh, thanks, Bypass, for the invitation. Uh, yes, I'm from European Brand Institute. As you see, we, we put uh, value to brands. Uh, we are a cooperation partner of WBAF. We met in Monaco. We signed the MOU because we want to work together uh, on the importance of brands and for investments in brands. And why is that? I will uh, tell you. We are also a partner of uh, United Nations. We created a joint program. It's called Branding for Competitiveness and Sustainable Growth uh, because brands are very, very key assets. I'm the chairman also of an ISO committee. We created an ISO standard uh, on uh, the definition of brands, on the evaluation and the management of brands. And the first sentence there is, Brands are the most valuable but least understood assets. So asset is very interesting. Why is it an asset? 
Yeah, you can sell and lease it back. You can even have more income through your brand. You can rent it to somebody else. This is called licensing. So why are brands so important? Brands account for about 40% of company value. You know, we do rankings. We publish these rankings. We do since 25 years this analysis. 40% of company value on average is uh, due to the brand. In the consumer goods, Austrian most famous brand or most valuable is Red Bull. Maybe there is 90% value from the company due to the brand. Why is that? Because they sell uh, their drink for 149 and the uh, OEM drink for one, uh, 0 0.29. So the, the price premium is 1 euro 20, so it's very high. So it's a very high brand value. Of course, in other areas like logistics, buildings, uh, metal industry, the brand value is lower. It's about 10% in this segment. However, on average, it's 40%. Everybody talks about innovation IP. How much you think is the value of patents in relationship to the brand? <coughs> A good guess from the audience. You awake? Four <laughs> percent. Four percent of corporate value on average is derived from patents. Why? A patent from the formal perspective is only valid for 20 years, a brand forever. But the successor patent comes within five to eight years already. So that's why, and now we come to the equity story, every uh, entrepreneur should think about the brand from the very beginning. Because look at several business models. Uh, in the pharmaceutical, you know, aspirin, you know, Viagra, you know, uh, I don't know, Dyson in the, uh, yeah, they start with, a, with an IP, but then you should put a brand on it because the brand makes it sustainable. The brand lasts forever and probably you change your business model and the brand stays. Just look at Apple, they started with computers, then they have these iPads and now they go into streaming services, whatever. So the brand builds the relationship. And now we can come to the effect of brand. We also analyze stocks. We, we, we start now a, a, a fund of stock listed companies with our methodology and we see these, these stocks uh, who are brands outperform the S&P by five to seven percent. Annually we did backtracking for nine years. So brands uh, make it more sustainable. Brands have a better relationship, have more loyalty with their customers. Brand makes an investment less volatile, less risky. If there is a downturn, brand, brands don't fall so much and come out of the crisis uh, earlier. So brands are very, very important to be considered uh, not only for the story, for the, what Weber said with Durban, of course, it's a story, it's an experience, but it's also an asset which reduces the risks for investors and brands show really superior performance. Is it enough for the first introduction? Okay. Yes, um, it is good, but um, brand, I am, you know me as the president of World business, but in 1991, I'm the one who established the Turkish Franchise Association. So I know how brand is so important to increase the company valuation, to make more money, to kill two birds with one stone. This is what I say. Why? Because I can I can sell cheeseburger in my store and make money. But if I have a, develop a good brand, because brand includes many things, then I start selling brand too, franchise it. So I start making two money from sell, selling, for, uh, uh, through selling uh, cheeseburger and through selling my brand. So brand is something very important that we have to consider. Why is it important for investors? If I understand there is a good brand or there is a good potential to develop, to create a good brand, then I invest, I may invest more and faster. So it is very important. Brand is, I think, the most 
practical way to convince investors, to turn your audience to your investor. This is my personal uh, comment. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Yes, um, uh, let's hear some insights from ladies too. Lady too. And uh, yes, floor is yours. Yes, uh, I'm coming from uh, Belgium, uh, a privately owned uh, company called Tremont Group, uh, and uh, I agree uh, with uh, my colleagues talking about uh, equity story. Uh, one of the important things, I think, it's a, a uniqueness of your business concept. Uh, the branding is important indeed, and, and uh, how you look at the, the, the scaling of the business, but again, if your business is unique and different than others, which will make a huge impact to, to angel investor. As uh, by name, investor is angel, which means it's uh, supporting you uh, in the early stage of, of uh, your development. But uh, 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 when you're bringing uh, your story and, and you don't give uh, enough confidence by, by uh, explaining your story, uh, of, of business point of view, why you are different uh, uh, from others in the market and why you are successful uh, uh, with your product or your service, uh, uh, then, uh, then it will make a uh, uh, very big uh, interest for, for investors to, to consider your, your uh, equity story. And on top, uh, I think uh, it's uh, uh, also important that how you, you um, care about your, your uh, team as well when you're bringing uh, your story, uh, uh, how much confident team you have, how, how much enthusiastic and, and professional uh, uh, members uh, would uh, uh, enhance uh, the confidence of uh, investor. From Tiemann's point of view, I can share that uh, we are unique in, in Belgium because uh, we create uh, residential labs for mixture aging population which is, uh, uh, in a way, we don't have a competitor because in, in Europe, mainly uh, elderly houses or, or assistancy a living concept, whereas uh, we created uh, the concept which includes all the components of, of uh, happy living or, or, or uh, sharing the, 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 the values uh, uh, and, and uh, still uh, have uh, uh, old and young together. Uh, uh, living in in residential area in in uh, Belgium, so that's why I I can uh, share from our experience that uh, uniqueness of of business concept is very important while you are bringing the story. Yes, uniqueness of concept. <sighs> this is a very important. Yes, this is very important. When you say concept, the first word coming to my mind is business model not business plan because there's a big difference between business plan and business model business plan cannot become a good story a cute story but business model can become a very good acute story isn't it as a matter of fact this is where the difference of entrepreneurs starts at the end of the day there is only one Excel sheet, and there are same figures, almost same figures. But when you look at this Excel sheet, when you show it to bank, let's say, and if if you put a story on this Excel sheet, this hundred k means blah blah blah. Then this makes the difference. Investor may come to this story, not to Excel sheet, as a matter of fact. Because Excel sheet shows what you did yesterday. But acute story tells what you are going to do tomorrow. A, a, can I add please. Um, I think you're right. And also the differentiation is very important. But this is actually what brands are doing. They are always thinking about how can I differentiate myself? How can I innovate? How can I change my business model as well because brand please don't misunderstand brand is much more than just a logo a logo from brand value is 10 percent of this value so when we say 40 percent the logo is four percent is nothing it's the whole concept it's the whole custom experience it's uh, you know relationships you're building the innovations you're bringing because brands are innovators brands are sustainable brands build 
digital. You know, digital is very important. Digitalization needs brands because without a brand in the digital world, you are nothing. So this is all, you know, combination is what you said, Barbas, is of course be different. This is normal, this is inherent in a brand, but also always rethink your model. Just look at Apple, what they're doing, or the car industry. They go away from buying cars, it's just using cars. So they are the leaders, brands are the leaders in <laughs> rethinking, being different, making the change and, and driving these changes and, and, and therefore being more sustainable than non-branded businesses. And brands? Brands, I, th I think, are something living. Because even big companies sometimes change their brands to, to keep because it is living. Because customer is changing, <laughs> their behavior is changing, and if you cannot adapt uh, your brand to this change, then it is great. So we are investing in the future as angel from angel investor point of view. We are investing in the future of the business. But banks, because sometimes I'm asked, we are all asked, what is the difference between angel investments and other invest, uh, investment instruments. The main difference is only angel investors are investing in the future of the business. Banks, private equity funds, Vatna, they all check the exit sheet of the last three years and they invest in the past, not the future. If it is fine, they are assuming tomorrow morning it will be fine too. But angel investor is checking if even it is bad, he may put his own network to make it better, he can put his mentorship, networking, but for whom? For the jockey, for the entrepreneur, not for everybody who wants money. The correct qualify. I think the message of yesterday uh, mornings um, from Starbucks video was qualified venture, qualified startup. I think we have to think about it. He's very right. for Starbucks. So if so do you think qualified startup qualified entrepreneurs main skill should also be to develop a good acute story. Let's start from you. I believe definitely yes. Um, I like to call these persons who are at the outset of a great new idea source people because they're not the same thing like founders. You can have plenty of founders, sometimes even investors that come in at later stage are called co-founders. That is not the people I mean here. I, 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 what I believe are the people that are important for the equity story are the source people. And why is it so important to give the right framework around these source people? Well, simply because if these source people disappear, for one reason or another, many, many things can happen. Sometimes it's team members not uh, being aligned anymore or for personal reasons or for sickness or because they just don't see their future in that business and want to change life. Then it's important that this venture has everything it needs to perdure, to be sustainable. And that will only be possible if they have taken the time up front to build the governance around that to ensure that the business can thrive in the future. And this is the one thing that I believe is so important in the equity story. It's not sufficient to say, uh, hey, we have the greatest idea, we're going to change this and that um, in order to really be, build a, a business that will uh, have a long life uh, lifespan. It's necessary to reassure the people who put the money in uh, that not only will they get to sit on the board, oh, beautiful, but if it's a very fragile uh, situation, it's not, not going to be helpful. They need to be reassured that irrespective of how many source people, if you are not able to retain them, uh, how, irrespective of how many people, source people are on board, you will not jeopardize losing all the company just because the source people leave. And I think that's super important to protect and to retain these source people. And it's actually going to be much more engaging also for the staff that is helping to build that dream and that venture. 
Thank you very much. Uh, uh, let's take your last words too, because we have only three minutes to end the session. And then, yes, the time is passed. No, no, uh, Gerard, you, you, you can say. But if you don't want to, I can talk uh, two days if I ever say about this brand thing. But you don't want that probably, and also you don't want that. Uh, no brand. Um, of course, we also we also invest in brands. We create funds where we invest in brands, and uh, for us, it's very important. Uh, that the entrepreneur thinks not only about his existing business, but also about potential future other opportunities. This means you should protect your brand as good as possible from a legal perspective, also from the process perspective. And then it's for us, it's an asset. We really invest in brands. We create you know, brand companies where you do a send and lease back transaction and so on. So we really create an asset which investment bankers tell us we create a new asset class now through the you know uh, what we do we do brand valuation since 25 years i work for courts and so on and now i come to the not equity story we supported many companies we evaluated their brands and the bank gave them money on our valuation because they had a pledge on the brand so you really see it's it's an asset it's like a real estate so it's it's an intangible asset it's for, we do valuations. We are experts worldwide. That's why I'm chairman of this ISO committee. We do valuations, rankings. I'm a legal expert. I work for the courts. I work for funds. And so now we create, since 25 years, and now we create our own funds uh, to invest in brands. And we create this new asset class. We talked about it. Um, now with this ISO standard, it's possible. Without the ISO standard, it was difficult. But now we have a definition. What is a brand? Where do you have to look at? We created a brand rating, so we have also for the investor a traceable, you know, uh, process. How is the brand status now? How does it develop? It's like an asset, like a real estate, you know. And so, just my point is, equity story. Yes, think about the future. Think about, you know, potential changes. Technology is changing. People are changing. You know, that's why Apple from a Macintosh to a streaming provider. Nobody thought about it. Or think about Caterpillar, what they did. Caterpillar is a machinery company, heavy machines. They repositioned their brand from heavy machines to heavy duty. And then they produced shoes, clothes. Now they have watches and uh, telephones where the car can go over it, even underwear. If you, and it's an A license like Disney. It's an A license like Disney. Yeah? If you tell somebody you make out of a machinery company an A license like Disney, you tell him he's crazy. But it's possible. And this opportunity we want to have when we invest in brands. The entrepreneur doesn't even know that we diversify it into other directions. And why is it important, another issue? Because the more often you see the brand, there is a halo effect the more strong it gets. And it's a progressive development also for the <laughs> existing segment is supported by other segments. So it's a, even more protection for the investor if you diversify, okay. Thank you very much. And yes, last words from you, please. Earlier, uh, I liked very much a speech of uh, Professor Singh from Singapore who mentioned uh, that each party as being as an angel investor or uh, entrepreneur, everybody has to make uh, their sufficient homework. Uh, uh, that means um, before uh, uh, meeting at some point each other, uh, uh, if I may give several advices for, for businessmen, that uh, uh, earlier you also mentioned uh, to, 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 to well prepared with your business plan, not to go for 50 pages of a huge story, but uh, just to to provide a summary of uh, two, three pages, which is clearly stipulating what exactly you expect from the investor and what is your business uh, that would you give the, the confidence. And also to be uh, realistic with your uh, valuations of your business. Uh, sometimes uh, you, you see in the market that, that uh, valuations coming very uh, unrealistically and it makes it hard for, for angel investor to, 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 to have that confidence. And uh, it would be advised if you meet your, your investor in the first meeting, better to say uh, you expect a, a reasonable uh, valuation than, than pointing some exact uh, uh, numbers. 
So, um, yeah, uh, uh, and also over uh, um, uh, concentrating on the fundraising, I think it's a huge mistake. Uh, at the end, uh, the business is, is uh, your baby and, and uh, should fly with, with your uh, luck and, and innovation uh, uh, of, of uh, taking care of the business. Thank you very much. Um, let's take only one question, and the, can, the other questions can go to their LinkedIn uh, through their LinkedIn uh, profiles, and you can have the answers. One question, please. No questions. Thank you very much. Everything is very clear. So I am thanking so much to our great speakers and for joining us. Thank you.